I dug into a crate of cheeses, getting out the paper-wrapped blocks and loading them into the cold storage pit on the far side of the room. So many of the foods the Reckoners ate were things I'd never been able to afford. Cheese. Fresh fruit. Most food in Nukago had to be shipped in because of the darkness. It was impossible to grow fruits and vegetables outside, and Steelheart was careful to keep a firm hold on the farm ho- farmlands surrounding the city. Expensive foods. I, could, I was already getting used to eating them. Odd how quickly that could happen. Prof, I said, placing a cheese wheel in the pit, do you ever wonder if maybe Nukago will be worse without Steelheart than it is with him? At the other side of the room, Megan turned sharply to look at me, but I didn't look at her. I won't tell him what you said, so stop glaring at me. I just want to know. It probably will be, Prof said. For a while, at least. The infrastructure of the city will probably collapse. Food will get scarce. Unless someone powerful takes Steelheart's place and secures enforcement, there will be looting. But you want your revenge, son? Well, that's the cost. I won't sugarcoat it. We try to keep from hurting innocents, but when we kill Steelheart... We'll cause suffering. I sat down beside the cold storage hole. Did you never think of this? Abraham asked. He'd gotten that necklace out from underneath his shirt and was rubbing his finger on it. In all those years of planning, preparing to kill the one you hated, did you never consider what would happen to New Cargo? I blushed, but then I shook my head. I hadn't. So what do we do? Continue as we have, Prof said. Our job is to cut the cut out the infected flesh. Only then can the body start to heal. But it's going to hurt a lot first. But Prof turned to me, and I saw something in his expression. A deep exhaustion, the tiredness of one who had been fighting a war for a long, long time. It's good of you to think of this, son. Ponder. Worry. Stay up nights, frightened for the casualties of your ideology. It will do you good to realize the price of fighting. I need to warn you of something, however. There aren't any answers to be found. There are no good choices. Submissiveness to, to a tyrant or chaos and suffering. In the end, I chose the second, though it flays my soul to do so. If we don't fight, humankind is finished. We slowly become sheep to the epics, slaves and servants, stagnant. This isn't just about revenge or payback. It's about the survival of our race. It's about men being the masters of their own destiny. I choose suffering and uncertainty over becoming a lapdog. That's all well and good, Megan said, to choose for yourself. But, Prof, you're not just choosing for yourself. You're choosing for everyone in the city. So I am. He slid some cans onto the shelf. In the end, Megan said, they don't get to be masters of their own destinies. They get to be dominated by Steelheart or left to fend for themselves, at least until another epic comes along to dominate them again. Then we'll kill him too, Prof said softly. How many can you kill, Megan said. You can't stop all of the epics, Prof. Eventually, another one will set up here. Do you think he'll be better than Steelheart? Enough, Megan, Prof said. We've spoken of this already, and I made my decision. New Cargo is one of the best places in the fractured states to live, Megan continued, ignoring Prof's comment. We should be focusing on epics who aren't good administrators, places where lives are worse. No, Prof said, his voice sounding gruffer. Why not? Because that's the problem, he snapped. Everyone talks about how great New Cargo is, but it's not great, Megan. It's good by comparison only. Yes, there are worse places, but so long as this hellhole is considered the ideal, we'll never get anywhere. We cannot let them convince us this is normal. The room fell still, Megan looking taken aback by Prof's outburst. I sat down, my shoulders slumping. This wasn't like anything like what I'd imagined. The glorious reckoners bringing justice to the epics. I hadn't once thought of the guilt they'd bear, the arguments, the uncertainty. I could see it in them, the same fear I'd had in the power plant, the worry that we might be making things worse, 
that we might end up as bad as the epics. Cross stalked away, waving a hand in frustration. I heard the curtain rustle as he retreated back to, retreated back to his thinking room. Megan watched him go, red-faced with anger. It is not so bad, Megan, Abraham said quietly. He still seemed calm. It will be all right. How can you say that? she asked. We don't need to defeat all of the epics, you see, Abraham said. He was holding a chain in his dark-skinned hand with a small pendant dangling from it. We just need to hold out long enough. I'm not going to listen to your foolishness, Abraham, she said. Not right now. With that, she turned and left the storage room. She crawled into the tunnel that led down to the steel catacombs and vanished. Abraham sighed, then turned to me. You look unwell, David. I feel sick, I said honestly. I thought, well, if anyone had the answers, I thought it would be the Reckoners. You mistake us, Abraham said, walking over to me. You mistake Prof. Do not look to the executioner for the reason his blade falls. And Prof is society's executioner, to warrior for mankind. Others will come to rebuild. But it doesn't bother you, I asked. Not unduly, Abraham answered simply, putting his necklace back on. But then I have a hope the others do not. I could see now the pendant he wore. It was small and silver, with a stylized S symbol on it. I thought I recognized that symbol from somewhere. It reminded me of my father. You're one of the faithful, I guessed. I'd heard of them, though I'd never met one. The factory raised realists, not dreamers, and to be one of the faithful, you had to be a dreamer. Abraham nodded. How can you still believe that good epics will come? I asked. I mean, it's been over ten years. Ten years is not so long, Abraham said, not in the big picture of things. Why, humankind is not so old a species compared to the big picture. The heroes will come. Someday we will have epics that do not kill, do not hate, do not dominate. We will be protected. Idiot, I thought. It was a gut reaction, though immediately I felt bad about it. Abraham wasn't an idiot. He was a wise man, or had seemed so until this moment. But how could he really still think there would be good epics? It was the same reasoning that had gotten my father killed. Though at least he had something to look forward to, I thought. Would it be so bad to wish for some mythical group of heroic epics, to wait for them to come and provide salvation? Abraham squeezed my shoulder, then gave me a smile and walked away. I stood and caught sight of him following Prof into the thinking room, something I'd never seen any of the others do. I soon heard soft conversation. I shook my head. I considered continuing with the unloading, but I found I didn't have the heart for it. I glanced at the tunnel down to the catacombs. On a whim, I climbed in and went to see if I could find Megan.